Charles Malachy, biologist and plant expert with Ivy Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today we're going to be talking about protecting your bulbs before planting them in the ground. And this has been a practice that a lot of our customers have had a lot of success with. And I wanted to share this with you as well, being another way to successfully grow your bulbs, whether they're flowering bulbs or your edible bulbs, such as potatoes, onions, and garlic. What I have here in front of me today are Take a look at these pictures over here. We've got some gladiolus. We've got um, our canna lilies. We've got our amaryllis, color white. And I've also got a variety of colorful calla lilies, uh, which are beautiful around Easter time to have in the garden. And what we're going to do first is, I want to share these products with you. And what I have here is a product called Ivy Organic. It's a three-in-one plant guard where you just add water and it's protection against damaging sunburn and insects and rodents for use on your roses, fruit, nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. And it's a non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic product. And you're gonna notice in the upcoming weeks or months um, that all of our retailers will be um, carrying this can show and that it's registered material for use in organic agriculture as well. And on the lid here, it says it protects newly installed plants and trees, shields pruned and damaged surfaces. And I'll give you a couple of examples of that later in the video. And the product comes in colors white, as I shared with you over here. And it's also available in colors green. As you can see, the cap is a little lighter, as well as brown. For this purpose, I'm just gonna use the color white. And so I'm just gonna take this can here and I'm gonna help prepare that actually right next to you so you can watch the process. So here we're just gonna remove the lid and within your can, you're gonna get a bag of organic paint powder as well as this bubble wrapped oil vial. And we're just gonna take that off here and you can see that the product comes with this vial of oils and the primary oil that's in this product is right here and it says organic castor oil and this is among cinnamon oil, clove oil, cedarwood oil, garlic oil, peppermint oil, rosemary oil. All of these other oils will provide your plant with defenses to predominantly insects but it's the castor oil that gives the product a bad taste and that'll actually naturally repel any rodents that may be in your ground. We're up here in the Hollywood Hills and even though there's walls all around the property, we're dealing with skunks and raccoons, as well as the underground um, critters, such as the moles, the voles, as well as gophers. Um, so this product will benefit the bulbs that are planted and keep them safe until they germinate come spring. What we've got here is the organic paint powder. We're just going to open the bag and put that here in the can. And I like to add a little bit of water to the product first and stir it and then add the oils to the contents. And then we'll just dump that in there. And what the paint powder does is it binds with the organic paint powder and offers a time release to the coating so that it naturally offers the defenses to the bulb or if you coat it on the plants for several months and sometimes up to a year. And we'll just now fill up the rest of the contents with water. And then stir thoroughly. I'm just going to stir this for a couple of minutes so I'm going to skip forward with this video and come back to you guys in just a minute. I'll see you guys soon. So now that we've stirred the so now that we've stirred the contents thoroughly, you can come back. You can see that we've got our organic paint powder. You can fill it up as high as you can go. I just ran out of water, but you can fill it up to the very top of the brim. And and then we're going to be ready for the next step. So here we go. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my bag of gladiolus and we're going to open that. Before I do, I want to share something else about these labels. When it comes to planting your bulbs in the ground, our goal is to basically add some color to this corner of our garden. And we're gonna 
come up with some pattern here between the gladiolus, the canna lilies, the calla lilies, and the garden amaryllis throughout the garden. But before we do so, I just want to share that on the label, it says over here that you can plant after the last frost date in your area. Um, and over here, there's a map. Let me see if we can pull this open here. And over here, there's a map, and you can see that the lower part of the United States, and we're here in Los Angeles, California, so we're in the darker zone. It says you can start this as early as January through April, so that's your growing zone. For the middle part of the United States, it's starting February through May, and for the upper portion of the United States, being much cooler, the soonest you'll be starting this is going to be March through June. So here's your growing zone map, and then there's one other thing I want to share with you that I found and it's a pretty cool tool for you um, gardeners to use, and I'll put the link down below in the comments to this video, but check this out as well, and I believe it's on um, plantmaps.com. Let me make sure you get a clear image of this. Um, let me show you, follow me. I've noticed there's usually glare, so I'm trying to find out where's a nice shady spot so there won't be glare. Try to come in really close. So here's a website called plantmaps.com and again I'll put the link down below in the comments to this video but as you can read here I'm going to zoom in you can see if we read this together that the average first frost in my zip code which is 90068 is between January 1st 2000 um, January 1st through January 10th while the average last frost date occurs between January 21st through January 31st. So starting the first week of February would be the ideal time to be planting. And what you do is you'll simply put in your zip code right in there. Let's go, let's continue. So here we are with our bag of gladiolus. We're gonna open them up. And this is what they look like. One option for coating your gladiolus could be simply taking the bulb, like so, and dipping it in the can, and just allowing them to dry. And that'll offer the bulb protection. And these bulbs are carbohydrate rich, full of sugars. Um, ideal for those underground critters, whether they be rodents or insects. So by coating them, the goal is you're going to be able to preserve the bulbs long enough for them to germinate and turn into roots and shoots and flowers, um, and then those sugars will be gone until the plant goes back into dormancy um, towards the end of the year. But a faster way is we're just going to open a bag here. And I just got the Ziploc plastic bag, and I'm just going to put all of the bulbs in here. Let me just turn that around. And here they all go. And now what we can do is just take, put that spoon away, and now we can just pour about a quarter of the contents into the bag and zip it up carefully. Make sure that top's sealed because we're going to be flipping it upside down. So here we go. And we're just going to mix it and mix it and mix it and mix it. And now they're all coated within the bag. And then to get rid of the extra contents, I've got my scissors over here and a plastic cup. And I'm just going to cut the tip off. And there it goes. And I can reuse all of that extra contents to coat the other bulbs as well. And there we go. What we're then gonna do is just put this in a place to air dry. So if you wanna come and follow me, my planting zone is gonna be over here. And all I'm gonna do is basically rip the bag open 
and allow it to dry. And then I've got all of these bulbs that are coated and ready to go for the in-ground planting. Pretty simple. I'm gonna share a couple other points while I've got you here in the garden. Check this out. Hang on, you gotta go in here. You can hit stop. So, while I've got you here in the garden, I wanna share this fig tree that um, has just gone into dormancy. All the leaves have fallen and I've allowed them to stay um, around the plant. But I want you to check out with the contents that I have left from the gladiolus bulbs. I'm now gonna take my brush and I'm gonna share with you what we're gonna to do to our fig. Check this out. So you can see here, these are the leaves of the fig. They have fallen and I'm leaving them to basically serve as what's called leaf mold. These leaves will break down and release all of the nutrients that we've used to fertilize the plant that are now in these leaves to break down, go back into the soil and continue to nourish and feed the supporting tree. Um, additionally, this is offering um, some warmth to the ground as well as the um, organic matter around the plant breaks down, it offers heat and it's also insulating the soil. So it's a great idea to keep your leaves around the plant throughout the winter months. What I'm next going to do is if you come in a little closer, you'll notice that where I pruned the fig in the past, you can notice that this was the central leader. I pruned it and it forced these other two branches to come out. And the goal was to create a multi-branched fig tree um, and the results are are happening and all of the branches have supported fruit in the last year. But if you take a look here in the center where I pruned it, you'll notice that the center of the plant right here where the pith is, let me take a little piece of this branch here, you'll notice that it's quite hollow right there, which will be a nice entryway for wood boring insects to get right into it. I'm pushing down and it's actually giving as I'm pressing. You can see I'm just using a smallest little twig and I'm breaking into the wood. And you can notice the cracks on it and um, and again, these are all entryways for pathogens, including bacteria, viruses, as well as the wood boring insects, such as termites and beetles. So by coating it, which we're gonna take this product, and again, you can use brown, green, and in this situation, I'm gonna use white. Um, and we're just gonna coat those surfaces and that'll protect it while that area continues to heal, which will take at least another year and up to possibly three years to seal and then it will be protected by the bark and the cambium tissues and offer the plant the natural protection. But until then, it's going to be coated with the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard. And I'm just going to now coat all of those surfaces. I can even coat the whole lower part of the plant. Another issue that happens common within the winter months is girdling and that's where rodents in the area can come and gnaw at the tree's bark to access the sugars. So we're going to coat the lower couple of feet of the plant to protect it. And now we'll just do the same thing with those other two branches as well. And now we'll do exactly the same thing with those other two branches as well. Stay back. S scoot back. So now we're going to do exactly the same thing with the other two branches as well. Don't follow me. Stay on the plant for a second. Ready? Let's conclude it again. Here we go. Branch number three. So we're just going to clear an area here next to the fig. The goal is you're going to plant your gladiolus 
The instructions require six inches deep and at least six to nine inches apart. So another thing and another tip is to consider growing them in groups of three. And hopefully I'm gonna get three different colors and it'll just be a bouquet of beautiful flowers here in the corner of the garden. If you've enjoyed this gardening tip from Ivy Organics, be sure to like it. Most importantly, subscribe down below so you'll be connected to all the other educational gardening videos by Ivy Organics. Thanks again for watching and happy gardening.